Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to be back with you again tonight. I had to get some rest last week, and I will be getting more rest as we move on. The Lord has given me a mandate that I must get more rest. And sometimes it's hard for me to slow my schedule down. I'm still functioning like I did 25, 30 years ago. I still have a lot of demands upon my life, but we must use wisdom, amen? And I'm just so happy that God is on my side and warning me about what I need to do. He did let me know that the enemy was trying to take me out and would take me out unless I rested my body more. So I will be having more times that I will not be on as regularly uh, as I have been. It is very difficult for me to give up my Wednesday nights, but we must obey God and we must do what is best for us. Amen. And I thank all of you that prayed for me. And I thank all of you that sent me notes on um, Facebook and Messenger and so forth, um, you know, telling me that you were supporting me and what I needed to do and encouraging me uh, to be more mindful of my natural needs. Okay. Thank you again so much. I appreciate all of your prayers and all of your messages. I don't take any of them for granted. Okay, we had started on uh, the subject of, will God give me a second chance if I've done something really wrong? And we had started in jo Jonah, and we're going to finish this up tonight. But I think I need to recap a little bit because of the fact that we missed a week. So I'm going to start at Jonah chapter 1. And it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. I'm going to stop right there. How many of us would be willing to go tell people God said you're sinning, your, your sins have come up before the Lord and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing the other that is not pleasing God. It is hard nowadays just for preachers to really preach the truth because they're so afraid that people, you know, people nowadays are touchy. And, and if you say anything that hurts their feelings, they think they're getting even with you by not coming back to your church. So therefore, preachers are hesitant. To speak the truth like they used to when I grew up. Uh, when I grew up, pastors were not afraid to tell you what you need to know. As long as it was biblical, they went on and spoke with boldness. And God wants us to get back to that place. However, Jonah was not at that place. He was afraid to go tell those people what they needed to know. And so verse 2 says, but Jonah ran away. So he ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went abroad and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. So Jonah thought that, how many of us think that we can get away from doing what God has told us to do, okay? Josh, uh, Jonah was doing something that we would consider really bad. He was intentionally disobeying God, intentionally. He made up his mind that he was not going to do what God was telling him to do. And he had the nerve to think that he could flee from the Lord. Oh, listen, we some of us have been there. People do this today. I have found that the things that we read about in the Bible from years and years and years ago, decades, centuries ago, guess what? It's the same kind of people today. And these same things are going on today. Amen? Okay, so let's go on now. I'm going to jump around, okay, because we don't have time to read all four chapters of Jonah. All right, but I'm going to verse 9. He answered, I am a Hebrew. Okay, he got on the ship. Let me back up a little bit. He got on the ship, and then the, the sea started cutting up, and the sailors or the people on the ship realized that somebody on this ship is causing God to be angry with us, and therefore the sea is acting up, and we need to find out who it is. So Jonah confessed. He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. Can you imagine that? Jonah had the nerve to tell the people, guess what, y'all? I'm running from the Lord. So I'm going to get on your ship. <laughs> Jesus have mercy. That took bonus, didn't it? He had the boldness 
to get on that ship and tell those people that he was running from the Lord, but he didn't have the boldness to tell people about their sins. My God, my God. People are something else, aren't they? Okay, let's go on down. And so we know now, we know as we read on through Jonah, okay? Uh, uh, but but Jonah was, 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 did not want to get off that ship. And so the guys decided we need to throw this dude overboard. Well, Jonah actually said, throw me overboard. And he said the guys didn't want to kill him. And they said, God, forgive us, forgive us, because we're about to kill this man. But we're not all going to perish because of Jonah. So they went on and threw him overboard. Okay, but let's go down to verse 17. I'm still in chapter one. But the Lord, listen to this. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. The Lord provided a place for Jonah to go while he was running. You need to get this. God was still looking out for Jonah. Good God Almighty. No matter what he had done. Woo, Jesus, I feel the anointing coming on. God was still looking out for him and protecting him. Don't you know that sea should have killed him? But God said, no, I'm not going to allow him to die. Okay. And I'm going to provide a place of safety for him while he is running from me. Until he comes to his senses. What a merciful God we serve. You need to know tonight that God still has mercy there for you. God has provided. A <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the devil is a liar. God has provided safety for you. Safety. He could have cut you off a long time ago. You understand? He could have allowed the enemy to destroy you a long time ago. But he's still a merciful and a good God. And irregardless of what you have done, good God Almighty, irregardless of what has happened in your life, irregardless of the mistakes that you've made, irregardless of how bad it is, God still has mercy and he's still looking out for you. <coughs> I love that. But the Lord, the Lord did it. A big fish just, just didn't come up out to sea and swallow Jonah because he jumped into the water. You understand? God provided the fish. Good God Almighty. The Lord was still protecting Jonah in his disobedience. God is still protecting you in your disobedience if that's what's going on with you. In your, in your uh, effort to not Surrender completely to God in your effort to run from God, in your effort to not do what God is telling you to do. God is still protecting you. The mercy of God is still around you. What a good God we serve. Good Lord have mercy. Let's go to chapter two. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, and he said, Let's stop right there. God knows what you're going to need to make you pray. Mm, mm. God allows certain things to happen in your life. Yes, and he protects you to go through them because he knows that it's going to make you pray. He mm -hmm. knows that you're going to come to a point that you're going to cry out to him. And that's what he's waiting on. He's waiting for you to turn to him. He's waiting for you to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of my mess. I'm sick and tired of the way I am. I'm sick and tired that I don't obey God. I'm sick and tired of running from God. I'm sick and tired of the mistakes that I keep making. At some point, you're going to get sick and tired and you're going to turn to the most high God and his mercy is yet there for you. His arms are open wide for you. Good God Almighty. You got, I got to go back to this. God provided a fish for Jonah. He provided a place for Jonah to be. I don't know where your place is. Your place, listen. Listen, Jonah was down in a whale. Can you imagine the gook and the muck and the mire that he was surrounded in? 
Your life, somebody that's listening to me, your life is down in the muck and the mire and the gook. Good God Almighty. And God has allowed it. He has allowed you to land right in that place. You know why? Because he's protecting you right there. He could have killed you. He could have allowed the enemy to knock you off. Okay, but he hasn't done that. What God has done is let you land in a place that he knows eventually you're going to cry out to him. And you're going to find out that his grace and his mercy still continues. And his love for you has not changed. Oh, that's the point I'm getting to. His love for you has not changed. God's love for us is not based on how good we are. I'm about to jump up from this chair. God's love for us is not based on how good we are. It is not based on all the good things that we do. If you look at the lives of all of the prophets and the men of God in the Bible, every last one of them had big deficiencies, big faults. Good God. They were liars. They were whoremongers. They were adulterers. They were murderers. Everything ungodly that you can think of, these men of God had before the Lord saved them and raised them up. Even after some of them got saved, like Peter, Peter still lied and said he didn't know Jesus. When Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, before that time came, Jesus told Peter, Peter, Peter was telling, bragging to Jesus about, Lord, I go with you to the death. I'm going to follow you to the end. I'm going to be with you to the death. And Jesus said to him, Peter, before the cock crows, uh, you will have denied me three times. You and God knows our weaknesses. Sometimes we think we all that in a bag of chips. But it takes one thing to show you that you are still human and that you still have weaknesses. And there before the grace of God go I. This is why we don't judge people. Good God Almighty. This is why we don't condemn people. Who among us has not done something that they wouldn't want somebody else to know? Who among us, good God Almighty, who among us has a clean sheet? Who among us can say that everything I've done was right? But all the love and the mercy of the grace of God has kept us and sustained us. And even though your life might be in a complete mess right now, God has you there in a holding pattern waiting for you, and he knows the day and the hour that you will turn to him and cry out to him and say, Lord, have mercy on me and help me in the name of Jesus. So let's go back now. Jonah, second chapter. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. And what did he do? He answered me. Oh, this is what I love about God. We don't serve a God that only answers those that have got it all right. We don't, oh, we don't serve a God who answers the, just those who, who think they're crossing every T and dotting every I. We don't serve a God who just answers prophets and preachers and ministers of the gospel. We don't serve a God who just answers people that we think are good. But we serve a God then in the middle of your distress, in the middle of your mess, in the middle of your up and down, in the middle of your 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 points, your the points in your life where you've done things that you know you shouldn't have done, or you're currently doing things that you know you shouldn't do, or you are currently disobeying God from something that He told you to do, or just disobeying His word, period. But this God will still call, when you call on him, he will still answer. Let me see what Jonah did. In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. You know, I could go to sleep right there on that with peace in my mind. And he answered me just to know that God will answer you. Who would serve a God like this? Oh my God. Just to know that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a goody two-shoes, as the world has, likes to say. You don't have to get it all right. And that same God, that same God will answer you if you just cry from your heart. You know Jonah was crying from his heart. He found himself in the belly of a whale, in the middle of gook, mess. Oh, I can't even imagine what was in that, bale, that, that whale's belly. Oh, my God. But yet he cried unto God. 
And God answered him. Let's go on. Mm. From the depths of the grave, <laughs> I called to the Lord. <laughs> Dad, Jonah knew he was in a graveyard. He was in a graveyard. He was dying. He should have died, but God held him there and he wasn't going to die. But he was in a graveyard. You understand? How many of you feel like you're in a, living in a graveyard right now? You just feel like you're just as good as dead. You feel like you're just about dead. You're just so sick and tired. of Things are just so off in your life. You've done so many things wrong. You just feel like God will never forgive you again. You just feel like this merciful God can't be merciful to you. Because you've been just that bad. You've done things just that bad. You've done things that you can't tell anybody about. Sometimes I watch that show thousand pound best friends anybody ever seen that and it's four ladies and all of them are very very large and they're trying to lose weight together and one of them in particular said she was crying talking to the therapist and she said i've done things that i could never tell anybody how many people are right there but oh god already knows about it and guess what his mercy is right there for you his mercy is right. His love is still there for you. There is nothing that you can do that God didn't already know you were going to do. God knew what you were going to do before you, when you were still a substance in your mother's belly. Do you understand? When you were just nothing, God already knew what you were going to do. And that's why he said, I have not come into the world to condemn the world. God is not condemning you. Good God Almighty. He's not condemning you. But he's here. To, the Bible says. But I have come that men might be saved. God came to save us. From the plans of the enemy. That who had plans to destroy us. God came to reverse those plans. And give us life. And give it more abundantly. Let's read on before I run out of time. Good God Almighty. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. I called for help. All God wants you to do is, Lord, help me. That's all you got to say. You don't have to get no great, profound speech. You understand? God, With God, you can keep it simple. Help me. From the bottom of your heart, help me. That's all you got to say. God, help me. Mm -mm. And the Bible says, he will hear you. He will answer you. Huh? He'll hear your cry. Let's go on. I'm at the bottom of, of, of uh, I'm at the last verse now in chapter two. And the Lord, oh, good God about it. Here we go. Because Jonah cried for help, the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. When Jonah cried out for help, God did something. Good God. Ooh, help me to stay in this chair. God did something to help him out. You will not be able to cry unto God and God not do something for you. Now, you've got to cry from your heart, you understand. You can't give words. You can't give emotion. But you've got to give deep down in your heart. You understand? That man was in, the, he was at death's door. And you know, you can only imagine how he was begging out to God. Crying out to God, help me, God. That's all you got to do is say, God, help me. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I don't know what to do. Help me. And the Bible says that God will answer. And he answered Jonah. And guess what he did? He commanded the fish. God can command your situation to turn around. God can come. When God speaks, something has to happen. The word of the Lord will not return void. When God says it, it's got to be done. He told that will cough up my child. And God did not put him in back into the water and made him swim. Jonah was already weak. He was already tired. But he put him on dry land. Good God Almighty. God is going to put your feet back on dry land. You might feel like you're drowning now. You might feel like you're going down for the last time. But I'm here to tell you and encourage you tonight. Let to tell you that God has your 
back. And all he's waiting for you to do is cry out to him. God, help me. Don't let your pride stand in the way. Don't let your stubbornness stand in the way. My God. But just say, God, help me from the depths of your heart. And I promise you, God will help you. He will help you. He will command your will to let you go. He'll command your fish that's got you swallowed up to vomit you out. And you're going to land on dry ground. You're going to land on your feet. Good God Almighty. You're not going down, but you're coming up. Let's go on. Jesus, help me, God. Chapter 3. My Lord, the first verse said, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Will God give you another chance? Yes, he will. He gave Jonah a second. God came right on back to him and said, okay, let me repeat this to you now. Maybe you've, uh, maybe you've, you've been out there long enough now. And maybe you've, 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 you've been hurt enough now. And maybe you got sick and tired enough now that you're not ready to go do what I told you to do. And God gave him a second chance. God will do the same for you. He will give you a second chance. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you've done. God will give you a second chance. Listen, God is not a respecter of persons. If he gave Jonah a second chance, if he gave all of us second chances, he'll give you a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. It's endless with God. God will always forgive you. Oh, my God. God, I know sometimes it's, it's impossible for humans. Sometimes it seems impossible that God could be like that because we tend to put God in a humanistic bag and we tend to think of God and view God the way humans would do because humans will say the first time I'll forgive you, the second time, well, maybe, the third time, no, I'm not forgiving you. That's what human beings say. But God is not like us. God created us. He is not like us, okay? God created us and sin has come in and made us into what we are. You understand? The devil has made us into what we are. But God did not create us to be sin-filled people. My God. He created us, my God, to have everlasting life on the, up in heaven and not here in this pit of earth. My God. But I want you to know tonight, God is a God of second chance. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And he gave him the message again. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message that I give you. And guess what? Jonah got up and went. <laughs> Sometimes you will respond because God has been so good. God has been so merciful. God has been so caring. God has been so loving to you. God has been so forgiving. Listen, God will forgive. God does forgive. I had somebody say, well, you understand. I had an abortion and I, I, I just don't believe God can forgive me. You know what happened with that abortion? The person couldn't forgive themselves. God forgave them. If they asked God to forgive them, God forgave them. But many times we cannot forgive ourselves. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're still judging ourselves. We're still condemning ourselves. We're still putting ourselves down. And because we're condemning ourselves, then we've convinced ourselves that God is condemning us too. Not so. Not so. God is a God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances. If God told us as human beings, if your brother offends you 70 times seven in one day, forgive them. Forgive them, the Bible says. Seven times seven, 70 times seven. Multiply that. And you'll see how many times that is in one day. You understand? And we got the nerve to walk around here and talk about if you cross me once, I'll forgive you. You cross me a second time, maybe. Third time you cross me, and I'm done. That's not biblical, and that's not godly. And that's not the way God works. God comes to love, to heal, to make better, to give you a life worth living. Good God Almighty. And you can't have a life worth living if you don't allow God to forgive you and understand that he is a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth, one hundred chances. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. 
Good God Almighty. Let this soak into your spirit. I don't care who you are or where you are. God will forgive you of whatever you have done. I don't care what it is. God will forgive you. God will forgive you. Murder? Yes. He'll forgive you. Oh my God. He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. Good God Almighty. Paul in the Bible was a murderer. He murdered hundreds of Christians, God's people, and God saved him, and he became one of the greatest men in the Bible. <laughs> Only a God can do that. What an awesome God we serve. Took a man that killed his own people, killed God's own people, raised him up, and he became a great man of God. Good God Almighty. God can turn anybody's life around, anybody's life. He can bring you up out of the gutter and put you on a mountain top. Come on and let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we just thank you tonight. We thank you, oh God, we thank you. We praise you that you are a forgiving God. We thank you that when we come to you with our whole heart, God, you hear us. And not only do you hear us, but you answer us. And then after you answer us, you do something to help us. You don't just leave us out there by ourselves. You don't just leave us standing alone and in our mess, oh God, and in our tears, oh God, and in our wretchedness. You do not leave us there, but you bring us into your way of life, your joyous way of life, your abundant life. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. This is the Easter season. And we are remembering all that Jesus went through just to go to the cross. And all he suffered on that cross. Oh God, he was the perfect sacrifice. And he sacrificed himself in willing obedience to you, oh God. He didn't want to do it, but he did it anyway. And oh God, because of Jesus we can now be forgiven by you. And so, God, we thank you for this word tonight. This word that let us know that it doesn't matter how far we've fallen. It doesn't matter what we've done. You're still saying, my child, I love you. And I'm here for you. Let me heal you. Let me help you. Let me give you a life worth living. Father, we praise and bless your name tonight. I pray for everyone that is under the sound of my voice, that you will bless them, that you will keep them and their families in the name of Jesus, that you will let them go higher and deeper in you, and that you will help them to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ to everyone that they come in contact with. Protect their health, oh God. Protect their property. Protect their homes. We're living in perilous times. We're living in dangerous times, God, but we don't have to fear. You said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, <clears throat> for I am your God. We stand on your word. We live in your word. Our life is in you. Outside of you, there is no life. So God, we bless you tonight. We praise you and we thank you. And we sure do give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I pray you've been blessed tonight. Join me next week, God willing. We're going to be talking about the, the cross and what that really means and what Jesus actually went through for us. We need to be reminded going into Easter week, Resurrection Sunday, that that was not a happy time for Jesus. Okay, <clears throat> and, we, and we, need, we need to come to reality about because sometimes people try to minimize what Jesus went through because it's so horrific. They don't really want you to know, but you need to really know what Jesus did for us so that we will have a greater appreciation for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God bless you all. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. May the peace of God rest, rule, and abide over your lives, your hearts, and your minds. In Jesus' name.